Justin Trudeau gets cozy with China. I'm Brian Lilly with the Rebel.media. I was looking at the headline of a column in the Sun newspapers the other day by my old colleague and office mate David Aiken when I became very uncomfortable. At G20, Trudeau gets a warm welcome from China, the headline read. Well, anyone getting a warm welcome from a dictatorial regime like China should, you, should make you worried, but this is Trudeau's first meeting with the Chinese leadership, and they were just absolutely pally. Aiken's column opened with this line, China has welcomed Justin Trudeau into the international family of world leaders like a long-lost son. Aiken went on to describe how China has fond memories of Pierre Trudeau and how Justin Trudeau and China's president have great admiration for each other. In fact, Trudeau was absolutely effusive about China during his meetings, all while the cameras rolled. I uh, uh, know that there are many opportunities for us to work together on uh, economic, political and cultural ties. Uh, and I look forward to a very productive engagement in the coming years. And I'm uh, happy to repeat uh, uh, once again to you, as I, I did uh, yesterday, uh, an invitation to um, you and, and to Premier Lee to come uh, visit Canada uh, and uh, continue to build on, on our tremendous friendship. Of course, this shouldn't come as a surprise, given Trudeau's past comments about China. There's a level of, of uh, admiration I actually have for China. Um, because their you know, basic dictatorship is allowing them uh, to actually turn their economy around on a dime and say we need to go green as fast as we need to start you know, investing in solar. I mean, there is a flexibility that I know Stephen Harper must dream about of having a dictatorship <laughs> that he could do everything he wanted uh, that I find quite interesting. Now, playing that clip isn't some below-the-belt shot at Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. It was a question he knew was coming. It was his honest answer. He admires China's basic dictatorship because he says they can turn green on a dime. They haven't, of course. They continue to have plenty of problems with real pollution and on Trudeau's main concern, global warming and greenhouse gas emissions, China continues to grow and grow and grow as one of the world's largest emitters of greenhouse gases. But their basic dictatorship means well, they could change, if they wanted to. But China hasn't changed and won't change because so many people are willing to kiss the ring of China's leadership in pursuit of cheap goods to sell back home. Now, some of you could point out that Stephen Harper was cozying up to China by the end. To a degree, that's true. But along the way, he also raised human rights issues. He voted while as prime minister to grant honorary Canadian citizenship to the Dalai Lama, even though that upset China's leadership. He upbraided China's political leaders about causes and cases of Canadians like Hussein Salil, imprisoned in China for trumped-up charges of terrorism. And although he approved the Sinoc nexon deal, he made clear that would be the last under his watch. All of this angered the business community here in Canada. People who were used to the easy ways of Jean Chrétien, now a fixer or lobbyist of sorts, a go-between for Canadian business leaders and Chinese officials. Now, under Justin Trudeau, the man that says rights are rights are rights here at home and invents new rights for those he likes, well, he won't be raising issues like human rights not too hard when he speaks to China. He won't be questioning the arrests of people who join churches not officially sanctioned by the government. He won't be a champion for the forces of democracy in China. He won't be pushing for better working conditions for the factory workers who toil day in and day out for low wages in factories that are also their homes, their dormitories, where suicide nets are hung from the sides of buildings to prevent workers from throwing themselves off the rooftops. These are all the reasons I get uneasy when I see that China has welcomed Justin Trudeau so warmly. The Chinese government may be one that we have to do business with in this day and age, but they're not our friends, and we don't want them thinking otherwise.